in today's video, I'm going to talk about the latest character in Fairy Tale Fierce Fire, who is Evergreen. But at the same time, uh, first thing I want to cover is that there is a system notice when you first log on to the game, and it does actually say midnight could potentially be coming tomorrow. Now, it does say it's only for servers which are launched on or before. 28th of March, otherwise it, you, you need to wait for 15 days. So for example, if you uh, only launch the game on the 29th, then you will only be able to see it on the 12th rather than tomorrow. But still, anyway, midnight seems to be coming very soon. So please wait till the events tomorrow before you want to decide who to summon or if you want to summon on any of them uh, because in my opinion midnight is probably a better choice than evergreen but yeah so i'll probably do another review for midnight when he is actually in the game tomorrow but for the time being i'll just talk about evergreen and some of my thoughts on whether she is a good character or not uh something else also worth mentioning is that also if you look at events uh, there's also increased chance to obtain colorful magic gear now i'm not 100 percent sure whether this is the same recruit banner as uh, the magic gear banner that we have already right now so if that is the case then you potentially want to save up with your ticket just so that you have a slightly higher chance of getting that i'm not too sure what's the same one so that's something we will have to see tomorrow and then there are a bunch of other ones as well for example like this ranking event uh basically you want to focus on card job so that's just a bunch of things that you want to look out for uh but yeah so back onto the main topic which is gonna be evergreen so that's the newest character so if we go into this so first, first of all there are two banners the skill dust and also evergreen uh guild does finish today which actually line up perfectly to midnight being released tomorrow so that's kind of why i do want to bring that to attention uh also someone asked me before whether the pt carry over uh it does seem to carry over which is strange because i do remember i had like a demo account for ikaruga uh when it first came out and that one the pity didn't roll over so i'm not sure what's going on here but it does seem like whatever pity you had in the previous banner do roll over to the next one which is very very nice uh and this magic gear one this is why i'm not too sure whether this is one that you'll be getting you know an increased chance of getting this uh colorful gear i don't know what it's actually this brilliant magic gear I mean, they look very colorful to me. So it might be this one. So definitely save up for your summer tickets till tomorrow in case you do get that increased chance. But anyway, back to the main topic. So Evergreen, is she a good character for you to summon at? So if we actually look at her in her stats, etc. Uh, so first of all, she is going to be a light character, but she does have one Earth type attack. So pretty interesting, but mainly you'll be using for her for light um her skill one she says she moves in an arc to the left but basically what this is is that if i actually in fact let me show you it's actually you curve from the right to the left so it's like kind of like an anti-clockwise motion so for example you see the three enemies here if i press skill one i curve from the right to the left so this one is somewhat tricky so basically I think it's like a bit of double edged sword. The first thing is that you have to get used to this. I'm personally not very used to this kind of motion of this. Especially for example, if you do this now, then the camera turns with you as well. So you kind of need to play around to see whether you're comfortable with this type of like movement. Uh, I personally find it a bit difficult, but you know, that's kind of just my personal preference. Uh, but it does have an added benefit, which is that if the enemy is trying to attack you, sometimes what happens I typically find is that you kind of go into like a one-on-one -on -one fight where you both fire like long range attack from, uh, is this, yeah, long range attack from distance. For, for example, this one, right? You keep on fighting this kind of attack from distance and then the enemy, because also here in just 29, will just be fighting back to you and just become like a battle of attrition to see who's able to take out who down first however if you actually use this one you potentially give you that chance to dodge attack if the enemy is not able to move their straight line of attack or with their attack range and that does potentially give you that added edge in that kind of head on head to head on battles when you're kind of 1v1 against an enemy uh but yeah just play around with this to see whether you're actually comfortable with this type of attack stuff so that's something you have to bear in mind so that's this one then for the second attack uh, this one just hits a straight line and reduce hit rate, so pretty straightforward, nothing really to talk about much here. Um, reduce hit rate, is that important? Y yes, I guess, to some extent. Um, I mean, obviously you can actually dodge attacks yourself, so if you actually want to rely on reduce hit rate, that normally means you want to go for like a head, 
head to head battle rather than you trying to manually dodge. So it's not as impressive to me as something like, for example, increase your defense or whatever. Um, but you know, it's still a nice benefit to have. Then for the third skill, I think this is somewhat signature, I guess, is the fact that she's able to petrify. 1.3 seconds as well, which is a decent amount of time. So, for example, if you play this out, uh, it's also AOE, so that's pretty nice. And then the fourth one is just an AOE attack, which kind of push back all of the enemy around you. Um, this one is a bit weird. I normally prefer the attacks which actually bring the enemy together rather than the one that kind of almost scatter everyone forward and backwards. So, for example, this one, uh, let me test it here. So, for example, you see those two enemy, one in front and one to the left. If I use this, uh, maybe I didn't do this very quick. Let me try to do this in the middle. Uh, if you do this, what you can see is that enemies get pushed towards you, but not in the same direction. So this is not actually the most ideal when you're fighting up against waves, because what happens is that all of the enemy will now be more spaced out and it's going to be harder for you to then line up your next attack for example that straight line so once again i'm not a great fan of kind of just some of the underlying movement that this one's cause so I, I think it does have a niche uses but it's just something that you have to be mindful of so that's kind of my source on kind of just the skills themselves i think it's decent but it's definitely not the same kind of motion uh as you expect from any other characters so you just play around to see whether you kind of you're used to this kind of for example moving towards one side to do an attack or kind of this one where you push everyone around you to the outside and then you potentially need to you know fight them one by one rather than trying to control everyone and grab everyone together so that's just something for you to decide uh this one also have a control immunity which is always nice to have i guess then if we look at this one um she has the ability to do additional damage when enemy is petrified now petrified is only for 1.3 seconds now so in reality i don't think this is very useful uh she doesn't actually have full down anywhere in her kit so potentially if you do want to use this you have to use this in conjunction with another character who's able to do that but in all honesty this 12 percent increase attack only for that 1.3 seconds is nothing so i'll just ignore this completely then this one all allied win uh with this game enhanced wins defense very situational not very high defensive uh buff either so i'll probably ignore this as well um this one is potentially where she would actually shine uh the first one i don't see anything too crazy just 10 percent damage increase which is okay decent but nothing special but then i think what really shines is for this one which basically she would have a 60 percent chance to inflict petrify um enemies if they already have bleed will reduce hit rate so remember she can do reduce hit rate but also you can use a different character to inflict reduce hit rate or bleed and then swap into evergreen to for that petrify and basically she has a 60 percent chance to petrify with two of her other attacks which is actually really nice because what happens is that you if they reduce hit rate on this first then you well actually no you will normally put yourself with petrify and then reduce the hit rate and then at that point the enemy will be out of petrify but then if you hit with either of those you have a 60 percent chance of petrifying the enemy again potentially you know it's only 60 percent chance but you do have two skills which are able to do that so you are then actually able to almost like guarantee petrifying of the enemy again so you essentially have like a back-to-back -back control when you're releasing all four of your skill and now the enemy will be petrified you can then safely swap it on to your next character to launch you know his combo attack so it's actually really really strong once you get to this one but remember you only unlock this when the character is actually already at six up so it could take a very very long time and then this one i don't know what this is typo but that's a very very weird number to increase it by um so i'm gonna assume that's a typo but if that's not that's insane amount of damage scaling but like, like that is just crazy damage scaling but like, you were increasing from 194 percent to i don't know like a thousand times so like, that's just absolutely crazy so i'm pretty sure that's a typo but um uh, if it's not then uh, I, I don't know they made one character way too broken if that's the case uh but yeah so as a result this is kind of what i think of evergreen I definitely think her skills get a bit of 
use to it. So then potentially it's a bit of a skill cap that you actually need to play her quite well in order to take advantage of her various different movements when she's actually doing attack. Um, but in all honesty, she only really shines to me when she's at already at 6 star and also unlock her second or third passive. So that's the reason why I don't really recommend pulling on Evergreen straight away right now. Uh, because it's just like, if you only have her at 3 star, uh, she doesn't really shine much. You really do want to actually kind of unlock her additional passive to really make it worthwhile. So rather than try to do a few spins to try to get her, why not just save up all of your resource for when you actually have enough to get her to six stars straight away and then actually benefit from, you know, having a well-rounded character who's completely able to play to her maximum potential, right? So that's kind of my thought. And then obviously, like I said, you also have to bear in mind of Midnight if she uh, he does come tomorrow. Uh, in terms of coverage, Midnight is one of the character I definitely think he, people want the most because of he has dark coverage, which right now in the game, depending on whether you summon on Jalau, you may not actually have a very good dark coverage. Um, so in that case, Midnight is going to be the best choice. Whereas Evergreen is light coverage, but you already get Makarov for free when you go through the story, etc. And also, out of the SR characters, you also have... Where is it? Aria? Where's Aria? Oh yeah, Aria, he's also a decent uh, light coverage uh, character as well. So in terms of light coverage, I don't really think you have to go for Evergreen, whereas for dark coverage, Midnight is definitely one of the best ones, because the only low rarity option, uh, which is full dark, is going to be Kageyama. Uh, otherwise, you kind of need to rely on either Ichia or Otia, who only have half of their kit as dark, or if you summon on... Jalal, then you can also skip Midnight because Jalal also have dark coverage. Even though Midnight is, has all four of his skill being dark, so much better coverage at, in Breaking Shield in comparison to Jalal, who only have half of his kit being dark. But still, you know, that's just something for you to bear in mind. Um, yeah, so like I said, Evergreen, probably just a skip for now, especially if Midnight is coming out tomorrow. And if you do really, really want to focus on Evergreen, my strong suggestion is wait for you have enough resources so that you can get her six stars straight away.